Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. It's gonna be a little bit different. This isn't a tutorial or a study note. So if you're interested in that, skip to the next video or don't watch this one. If this is more of a life update kind of thing. Um, I wanted to reflect on the journey of how I actually got into the cloud engineering space. And my background is a little different. As you see the title, I had no experience and I had no degree. I still don't have a degree in going into the field. So I figured if anyone else is out there and, and they kind of find themselves in a very similar situation, providing a little bit of transparency and insight into how I got into it might be able to enable you. I've broken it down into five sort of tips. Three are for getting actually into the field and then two are once you are in the field, what could enable you to take the next step or take different risks and such. So the first one is going to be Try to lean on resources that you already have. A lot of people are in already like a developer role, a help desk role, a sysadmin role, a networking role, and want to move into cloud. Sometimes at the places that you are already in, they'll have someone who is working on cloud. Maybe there's an infrastructure team, maybe there's a cloud engineering team already. See if you could maybe like uh, negotiate some downtime with your supervisor. Maybe you can get an hour a week to just see what they're working on. As like the cloud team, see what the cloud team is working on. I was at a help desk job. Um, it was like an entry level help desk job. And I, when I had downtime, I was able to sort of shadow any team I wanted to. And my only interest really was the infrastructure team because I got along with them and they were moving some stuff into AWS. So they allowed me to really see what was going on. That led me to getting AWS certified, which I would also recommend doing, get certified in whatever cloud platform you want to become certified in. And I got kind of an, an, an introduction to how it works thanks to the certification and thanks to being exposed to AWS with this team. Um, then this rolls into my second tip, which is widen the pool of areas that you are applying to. Everyone wants to work at Facebook and Google and, and Amazon and Microsoft and Apple. And those are great. If that's your goal, definitely go for it. But that was completely off the table for me because I didn't have a degree. I don't have a degree. I, I didn't even go to high school here. I was living in South America. I did two semesters there. I dropped out of school and I moved back to, to the States. So I barely had any work experience really on paper. Um, so I was like, all right, let me try to go for these smaller mid-side companies. Maybe it'll, it'll work better for me. And I heard back from a lot of these. I will say that I was sort of at a time where getting certified and, 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 and getting into cloud computing was still very, very niche. Um, so this was about three, four years ago. So yeah, I had that going for me, but definitely applying to smaller mid-sized companies worked well for me. And I feel like it's a little less competitive and they're a lot lighter on what requirements you need to even get into the field and what say experience you need. And sometimes they're willing to take a bigger risk on people just because they need talent. Um, so yeah, tr give that a try. Um, my third tip is be open to what roles you're going for. Maybe not your next step isn't necessarily a cloud engineering or cloud computing role, but maybe it's like cloud adjacent, like it'll give you exposure into it. I know for me, I after the help desk job, I got certified and then I was applying to roles. I was applying to a bunch of cloud roles, but I was also applying to any roles that would give me exposure to cloud. And I landed on the role that I'm in now, well, the company that I'm in now, where there, it was a sysadmin role. Obviously you would have to do sysadmin and some IT stuff, but uh, IT help desk things. But they also mentioned in the bullet points there in the, in, the, in the listing is if you have any interest in cloud, we're currently like, migrating and you'll have exposure to that as well. So for my, I, I landed the job. Um, I actually did like really well in the interview and that could be a whole video on itself, but I, you know, did well in the interview. I landed the job. And then for the first year, I was not only taking care of all the roles that my, all the tasks that my roles, defined, but also I was volunteering to be on any additional project that would give me exposure to cloud. And I remember working a lot, a lot that, a lot that year or time on the weekends. Obviously I'm in a privileged position where I don't have kids depending on me or like a, a partner or anything depending on me. So I really had all my time to myself and it, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a healthy behavior because I remember gaining like a lot of weight and being anxious, but I learned so much and I got so much exposure. And, and sometimes there's that sacrifice that you do have to make to, in order to like make the next step in your life. So that was definitely worth it, but I would have not landed in that position or not gotten exposure if it weren't for me being open to not necessarily landing a cloud role, but getting into a role that would, um, get me there eventually. And that leads into my, uh, what is this, fourth tip? Um, well, I guess this is kind of like the same as sometimes you don't need to move out of the company. Sometimes you can move up. Eventually I was promoted into a, a cloud engineering role, but that happened within the same, the same company. So that might be a possibility too. My fourth tip is once you're in your role, and this is, I guess, for any role, like any, and not specific to engineering, is 
be smart with your money. I was never like literate when it came to personal finance up until a couple of years ago where I started making some money enough to save and I was like, maybe just saving isn't enough. Um, so I started learning about like retirement accounts and, and investing and stuff like that. And you know, now I'm in a position where if I take risks, I have a great cushion to catch me in case I become unemployed or something or I stop making money. Um, but yeah, that's kind of just like, that's more like a life tip. But I would say just because sometimes these engineering roles come with salaries that are pretty big, um, yeah, it, 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 be smart with your money. That's number four. And number five also is like once you do land your role, lean on your community, continue to educate yourself. I'm not telling you to be studying constantly every single day, learn every single new tool, but be in the know, stay updated, you know, chat with other people who are in the field or chat with other newbies or chat with other professionals, whatever feels work feels good for you. Uh, utilize things like LinkedIn and social media um, in general they are great ways to to, to tapping into the, to the community, but network and, and you'll never know what opportunities come from that. I speak from my own personal experience. I tweeted about this as well as like, since starting this channel, I've built an amazing network and so many opportunities have popped up for me in order to say, take a next step of maybe being uh, employed as a college engineer to doing it completely on my own, which is a step that I'm taking at the moment. Um, so you, you'll never know what comes from networking and building um, yeah, those are, those are my, my five, I guess, bullet points as to how to get into the field. And once you're into the field, how to keep growing, don't be afraid to go for it. Apply for, apply for anything. Really. I, I applied to a lot of things and I got rejected to a bunch of things, but you know, becoming comfortable with rejection is a skill set on its own. So you know, go for it. Just go for it. Um, anyway, reach out to me on Twitter if you'd like to chat or if you need to talk about really how you know some struggles or anything really uh 100 days of cloud is still going on i think i mentioned that in my previous video if you are looking to get hands-on with a couple of projects or, or the community or talk to us we're over 230 members now um you know we're dialing the code of conduct right now to make sure it's a safe and open environment for everyone and you have my word that i'm fully fully committed to that and it's an open source project, so no one's making money off of it. It's really just a bunch of volunteers uh, putting in the time and, and, and resources to, to, to grow it. So yeah, hundredsofcloud.com if you want to learn more cloud things. <laughs> uh, as always, you can find me on Twitter at MadeByGPS, and I will see you in the next video.